Come on. Wait. Come on, what's wrong? We're actually going to do this. Well, we will, unless your dad figures out that there's something up. No, he won't. Well, he came close, Michelle. Too close. You when I took the keys to the cabin. Yeah, talk about having your hand in the till, huh? It's okay. He bought my story about going sledding. Well, he's as much of a sucker for you as I am. I would believe anything that comes out of this sweet little mouth of yours. I only tell you the truth, Jesse. You know, these last nights before we get married are driving me nuts. I want you so bad. The only thing that keeps me sane is telling myself that we're going to be waking up next to each other for the rest of our lives. I can't wait to be with you either. I took all my savings out of the bank. Oh, I still hate that you had to do that. Well, we need something to start off with, right? And it'll help. Yeah, along with my bikes. I got my two best bikes tuned an inch away from perfection. I got a buyer for the first one, too. I'm waiting around to see if the one we rode up on, you get a bite on it. I wish you didn't have to sell them. Yeah, well, it did on you draining your savings. But you know what? Once we get our things together, we will have nothing to worry about. It's all gonna happen just the way we planned it. Yeah, well, we could do without the close calls, though, huh? Mm. I mean, I broke into sweat when I saw your dad, and he came into the kitchen with you having those keys in your hand. <laughs> no more close calls. Dahlia's gonna make sure of it. Come on. Wait, Michelle. Hold up a sec. What? Hold on. I've been wanting to give this to you. I was gonna wait till later, but I guess now is the right time. This was my mother's. Jesse. And it, it fits perfectly. Now we're officially engaged. He's the attorney from hell, Ross. He's like Al Pacino in that movie, but without the charm. You're overreacting, Black. In fact, I think we both are. You know what? I would love to wipe that smug expression off his face. Why don't you just come here and sit down? Oh, wait. Maybe that's him now. Mr. Ben. I can wipe his smug smile off his smug. Hi. Oh, no, it's not the great Mr. Warren. It's the next worst thing. Abby, come on in. Okay. You know what, Rick? Oh, if I had go. it my way, I wouldn't let you into this house. Blake, I need to talk to him. Thank you. Why would you even want Ben Warren to represent Abby? How could you, Rick? Blake, please. I don't please, know what you're thinking please. here. I mean, Ben isn't interested in Ab Abby. He's not Blake, after her best thinking. interest. He wants headlines. He's Blake. not interested in justice. Hey, I, you made your point. Ross gave up his career to help you. If that doesn't show dedication, I don't know what. Wait a minute. I didn't leave the DA's office just because of Abby. I thought it was the right thing to do. I made a decision, and you're going to have to, too, Abby. Well, that's why I'm here. I have made a decision, and I would like you to be my attorney. So please say yes, Russ. Yes. I will represent you, and you won't be sorry. I take it you don't agree? It's Abby's decision. I just hope she's making the right one. Please, Dan. Harley! Harley! Here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we were worried about you. You took such a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should know better than to shop at those stores at this time of the yes. day. <laughs> How's my coop? Oh, oh he's good. perfect as oh, usual. What do you good. think? He's up there busy playing with his guests. Oh, trucks, trucks. Of course. <laughs> the diesel truck that, that Philip gave him, his yeah. favorite. Oh, that's very sweet of Philip to yes, give him that. Yes, Philip is very sweet. And yeah. You know, it's funny. Even though he was raised in that fancy Spalding house, I think deep down, he's actually a trucker. Oh, so under that white collar, there is blue? Well, it's royal blue. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh before I forget, you got uh, three phone calls. Oh. Nola called at 8 o'clock. Then at 8.30, uh, oh, there was Nola. And then at 9 o'clock, let me remember, I think it was Nola. Three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she's nothing if she isn't persistent. Mm -hmm. She was less of a pain when she was the anonymous stalker. Oh, no, she was a pain during that. It's just now she's turned into this dull ache that refuses to go away. What exactly is her deal? Is she still interested in Dad? 
It's not her interest in him that worries me. You have nothing to worry about. You are the love of his life. A life he doesn't remember. Yeah. Well, let me hang up your gold ring. Oh, I can do this. No, no, no. You are a guest right. in this house and you're pregnant. Oh, oh, drop this. Oh, sorry. sorry. Take that. What is, that? is that the amnio? Is that the amnio? You got the results? You went to the doctor and you didn't tell me? Why didn't you tell me? Is it a boy or a girl? I hope Did Dad I go with you? enough paper towel. There's one thing in Dad this didn't house go with you to the hospital, did we he? We always run out of paper towel. Matter of fact, Dad never goes with you to the hospital, does I don't he? I not know how we do it, but I could buy a whole truckload. Dad never goes to the hospital I with you, I should check on Jenna. Coop. I really ought to check Coop on Coop is fine. He's happy as a clam, which is more than I can say for you. What's wrong? Something is off with this pregnancy. There's nothing off with this pregnancy. There is. Molly. My hunch tells me it's something you don't want my father to know. Jumping to rotten conclusions as usual, Harley. Really? Am I? Yes, yes, you always assume the worst. Have you ever thought that perhaps I don't want to bother him right bother now? Bother him? He has rather a lot on his mind at the moment. Like what? Jenna, this baby the two of you are having, that's the only thing the man is clear about. He's clinging to it. Don't. There's something strange going on here. From the first time you told me you were having a baby, I knew something was up. When I told you Buzz was missing, I was exhausted. Why don't you want to share this amnio with my father? Why are you asking me all these questions? Why are you getting defensive? I am right not getting now? defensive. I just don't like being given the third and degree. And you know what? There's something else going on with this whole pregnancy. Something I haven't said before. Would you just stop this cop action? Look, you, your cop days are long gone. Right? Jenna, listen to me. You're not nesting. <laughs> You're not doing that nesting thing, that mother-to-be thing that pregnant women do. Great, Detective Cooper. When do you suppose I ought to do this nesting? Hmm? I've got a young son to raise. I have a business to try and run without much help from you. And then there's this restaurant woman who is going after my man. So while I'm fending her off and trying to live my life some sort of resemblance, when am I going to do this? There's nothing wrong with this baby, is there? No, there's nothing wrong okay, with Okay, so baby. there's nothing wrong with the baby. Beyond that, I'm gonna find out what this is, because I know there's something wrong in your hiding. Would you get off me. this? It's and not I think your that my business. father, I'm gonna give him this M. You'll be No, I don't want no. to give Why? it to him. Give me one good reason. Because he isn't the father of this child. Abby, leaving the DA's office has freed me up totally. I can devote all my time to you. I'm holding you that, Ross. Rick, you don't have to hold me to anything. I'm giving you my word. Abby, you don't have to worry about a thing because you've got the best attorney in the state representing you. And I can't wait to spread the news. Wait a minute, who are you gonna tell? Everybody. Blake, not Ben. Of course not. I mean it. You know what, I don't wanna go near the jerk, okay? I'll see you later. All right. So now, Abby, do you have any questions? Well, I just want you to promise me something. I don't want you to pat me on the head or keep me in the dark at all. You got it. And I want to be informed on everything that you're doing. You have my word. Okay. And I also really don't want you to make any promises that everything's going to magically turn out all right. No, Abby, I, I wouldn't do all that. All the facts. You're going to get the facts. I want the defense broken down step by step. How are you going to screen potential jurors? Your overall strategy with the judge. I mean, that was missing this time. What was missing? Ross, there was clear evidence that you chose to overlook or just didn't see. Rick! Abby, that's how we got blindsided in Roy's trial, and that cannot Enough. happen this Stop. time. Stop! Are you the one on trial here, or is it me? We cannot afford to make any more mistakes this time. We have to be aggressive. Sometimes I wonder if you are the one who cannot hear. So, what do you think? I think it's a hot set of wheels. I, uh... Maybe just what I need. Good. We're going away. 
You and Jesse? Yes. Where to? Someplace. Do I get to know for how long? A little while. You need my help, but you're not going to tell me anything about what's going on. I just need something to tell my family. Oh, wait a minute. I get it. You and Jesse are going to sleep together. Is that right? No. No? It's much more than that. We're running off to get married. Look! Is that oh incredible? Wow! <laughs> yes, it, it is, but you, you, you can't do this. You can't. Whoa. This is one beautiful piece of machinery. You know anything about bikes? I don't know. I don't know what I do know, but I need a change in my life. I know that. I mean, this could put some pizzazz into it. Wow. You've got some soft tail. No one's ever commented on my soft tail before. She meant the button. She's right. She knows her stuff. How could you how could you do this to him? How could you come back into his life and then betray him like this? Jenna, this child is the only thing that is keeping him here in town. And when he gets his memory back and he finds out that kid is not his, it will destroy him. I know my father. You think I don't know him? Is it's Jeffrey's baby, isn't it? This is Jeffrey's child. How could you do this? What was this, like a one-night stand? You just couldn't let go of him? He was too good in bed? Were you, were you hedging your bets, thinking maybe my father would dump you? It so doesn't matter now, does When it? are you planning on telling him all of this? Were you just gonna play this off like it was his baby? Is that what you were gonna do? Were you just gonna hope that he'd fall so in love with this kid when he found out the truth it wouldn't matter anymore? Father, this is none of your damn business. It's between your father and me. Really? Because I think you're forgetting somebody, Jenna. The biological father. Doesn't he count? Holly. Of course, something like simple common sense, that doesn't hold you up from getting what you want. No, you know what? You played it to the hilt. You, we all bought it. The, the devoted fiance, you played it beautifully. I bought into I it. I love your father. Oh, I always have and I always will. Don't you make a mistake about that. This thing that happened with Jeffrey was once, once, once. and I didn't have a choice in New York. That night, I didn't have a Wait, choice. in New York? This happened in New York? When we were all together in New York? No, because you said that you said that you were afraid of Jeffrey. You said that if Jeffrey found out what me and Philip were doing, did Jeffrey find out about Philip? Jenna, you, you slept with Jeffrey to save my life. Jenna. Jeffrey would have killed both of you, Harley. He was getting so dangerously close to, to figuring it all out. He had already run your father down in the car. It's Jenna. just a warning. I was absolutely terrified. You and Philip, you were in that other room. You were totally oblivious to anything going wrong, but it was going terribly, terribly wrong. He was watching you on the surveillance camera. He could see something wasn't right. And then the screen went blank, and I, I, then I really had to distract him because he knew something was up. I don't think that you're fully aware of just the extent he would have gone to. Oh, my God. There is a bit of irony in this whole mess for you. That was a very special night. Something very magical, very spontaneous happened between you and Philip. It was the beginning. Uh, unfortunately, it was the beginning of the end for me, but... <sighs> you slept with Jeffrey to keep him away from us. Well, that's the only weapon I had to stop him. <laughs> you had to let him take you to bed. Well, it's what he wanted. He'd been wanting it ever since I went back to Buzz. He used to beg me to sleep with him, so I knew it would work. And it did. And I knew it would distract him and long enough to forget about the two of you. Um, I also knew that I would pay for it down the line. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it would be quite so soon down the line. I don't know what to say to you. It doesn't matter. There's nothing to be said. What's done is done. Why didn't I see this? Why didn't I... Why didn't I say something? Why didn't I... Why didn't anything occur to me about this? I mean, 
The last thing you needed from me today was to be hammering away at you, Jenna. No, it's not the last thing I needed. There's all <laughs> so much more. Nola knows the truth. That's why she's been hanging around so much. Nola knows about this? Yes. And she's been holding it over my head while she spins her web around Buzz, slowly dragging him in and pushing me out. So I used to ride one of these things when I was on digs with my husband, <laughs> my ex-husband, I mean. He taught me how to ride this. You know, I'm getting flashes from my past. There must have been a motorcycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Anything else, why wouldn't I, why would I have named my daughter Harley Davidson Cooper? But I don't think you were a real biker type. I think you were just a free spirit who liked to hop on his bike and just go. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. And I... What do you think? Do you want to throw your jacket in with it? Yeah, what do you think? I'll even throw in the helmets. Great, <laughs> great. Oh, it's sweet. It's a sweet machine. Well, you know, what about Jenna? Is she gonna go for this, or is she thinking, like, big old station wagon? Yeah, you're right. It's not practical, is it? No, it's not practical at all. I mean, she just can't take this free-spirited, non-conformist side of you, can she? She's probably fighting it tooth and nail. Well, I don't know about that. She's just been hard for her. How? Well, I, you know, I'm... She's her, and I'm... You're trying to find yourself, yeah. and you know that can't be easy, trying to do that and then trying to live up to her expectations. Well, it's not I like I have to. No, no, I didn't mean that. It's just that you were never a conformist before. No, you're right. It's been rough. I feel like I have to measure up, but not her expectations, mine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Kill me if I bought this. Uh -huh. Well, look, if the bike's not right for you, it's cool. Oh, but it is right. I mean, it was made for him. It was like it's custom made. Oh, you've got to go for this. Mm -hmm. Buzz, you know, you, you, you're just one of those people, those lucky people that was given a second shot at life, and you just have to take it. You have to, you just have to follow your heart wherever that leads. I'm gonna go check on the twins. It's a little too quiet, if you know what I mean. Are you okay? No. Honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put my two cents in. I just wanna make sure that Ross is on the right track. I am, I am getting tired of hearing that. I'm sorry, honey. I just don't want to see you lose this case again. I'm... I'm getting tired of all of this. I'm starting to feel so alone. No, I don't understand. That is why I am feeling so alone. I feel so far away from who I was. From all the people that I grew up with. People who believe there is no justification for killing. Not even in times of war. And I believe that. But I have ignored all of those values I was given. I took a gun, and I took a life. I did a terrible, terrible thing, I Rick. I wish I could make you see it was an well, act of self-defense. You can't! You can't! I want you to stop trying to make me see! I lay awake every night trying to think of how I can pay for what I did. And I'm realizing right now that I already am. With the man that I love. What are you talking about? I'm losing you. The man that I love and adore. No. I am losing you to your anger. You were becoming bitter and angry, and I thought I was the one who had changed in this nightmare, but you are changing. You're changing so much. I just, I hope it's not for good. Copy Dershowitz, copy Black. Huh. Hello. I think Marshall wrote an opinion on it, and fax the Supreme Court. We need access to the archives. You're so thrilled with your own self-importance. It's like a political cartoon. Well, sexy and funny. That's kind of an irresistible combination, don't you think? Pompous and slimy. How resistible is that? So did you come by for a little chit-chat, or did you have something more intimate in mind? Memo re-Christmas presents Blake. 
one black teddy and garter. Funny. It's my present. You and a black teddy and spiked heels. Well, Christmas is just gonna have to wait for you, pal. Because Ross's resignation as DA has been accepted. And Abby has hired him to defend her, so you can just pack up your faux designer bags and hit the road. I thought I'd gotten through to your old boyfriend there, Rick. He was never my boyfriend. And it was Abby's decision. She hired Ross. In fact, I do believe she's sitting in our living room even as we speak. You're wrong lawyer. That's a big mistake. You made the mistake, counselor. Coming here and acting so despicably to my family and to Ross. I acted despicably to Ross? He explained to you why he did what he did. He even apologized to you. How? By taking me down memory lane? Those memories should have been mine. Go away, Ben. I'm not going anywhere, Blake, and I'm not through with Ross. I'm just getting started here. You know, I could almost feel sorry for you. You've lost touch with reality. You really need to get a grip. Is that an offer? Go back to New York and leave us in peace, Ben. Oh, don't count me out, Blake. Comebacks are my specialty. your mind about him, Daya? I did. I have. It's just, God, this is so sudden. I mean, you're talking about just running off. What about our pact? We promised that, you know, we'd be at each other's weddings. I know. I know. Well, I'd like to at least, you know, be there when it happens, to help you plan it. You know, I always dreamed of having a big wedding. <sighs> Walking down the aisle in a spectacular dress with a train that never ends. Well, yards of veil. That's what I'm talking about. But that was a dream. And then I met Jesse, and the reality is so much better than any fantasy I've ever had. Uh, well, couldn't you just kind of, you know, combine fantasy with reality? No, I don't have time for that, Taya. Oh, make time. I have... This... There's a voice inside of me that's telling me not to wait, to seize the moment. You know, especially after everything that's happened with Abigail. A person's life can change at any second, Dahlia. That's why we can't wait. And Jesse and I are going to be together, really together, husband and wife. <sighs> be happy for me. That goes without saying. I wish you all the luck in the world. You know that. Thanks, Dad. <sighs> OK, but when you come back, I'm throwing a huge party for you. And don't you dare oh. say no. No to what? Well, shh, this is hush-hush, don't tell anyone, but you and Michelle are running off for a couple of days, and when you come back, you're gonna be husband and wife. Now, who told you that? <laughs> I have a source very close to the situation, and if you don't take very, very good care of that source, you'll have to answer to me. Well, that won't happen, because I want to take care of your source for the rest of her life. <laughs> I believe you. Okay, as far as um, this cover that you guys need, I think I think I got one. Because uh, Marcus and I are going to Chicago to gig this weekend, so you can tell everybody you're going to be our groupies. That sounds good. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Dahlia. You're welcome. See you later. Okay. Bye, Dahlia. Everything's working out. I even got a hot prospect for the bike. Oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> Does it feel good? <laughs> Fits like a glove. Yeah? It looks great. Oh, I gotta look cooler than driving a van. Oh, yeah, you gotta buy this, Fuzz. You really do. You have to buy it. I don't this. know. I don't know. Oh, come on. Come on. Make a statement. Just, just open up to new possibilities and let new people into your life. And, and you gotta, what? What do they say? Go for the gusto, baby! Yes! Yes, and you gotta do something for yourself. I mean, what you're gonna have to go through with Jenna and the baby, I mean, it's just a shame. Am I missing something here? You know something about Jenna and the baby that I don't know? I'm sorry, Rick. Abby, don't be sorry, because you're right. You're right. I'm going so crazy trying to protect you. I'm going so crazy, I've just pushed you away. You are not going crazy. You're just very, very angry. I'm too angry. angry. I'm angry at myself for not being able to take care of you, for not being able to take away your pain. I see this beautiful woman that I love 
suffering every single day of her life, and I can't do a damn thing to help her. I can't do nothing, and now I find out that I'm just making things worse. No. Yes! Yes, and the hell of it is, I know it, I know it, and I can't seem to stop myself. I'm on the outside looking at somebody who's angry and bitter and critical. That person's me. Abby, I'm... I, I just don't know what to think anymore. I'm just lost. It's okay. It's okay. No, no, honey, no. See, it's not okay. It's not. See, I'm doing the very thing I warned you not to do. Allowing this to affect our lives together. You just keep trying to fix things. You can't fix everything, and I want you to stop. Do you really mean that, sweetie? Yes, I do. I cannot worry about myself and about you at the same time. Either we're gonna have to do this my way, or... I think that you should not be involved. Well, you know, this pregnancy is so different from the one with Coop. So different. This, this baby, just so quiet, it doesn't move. I think it senses my ambivalence to this pregnancy. Jenna, I am so sorry. Oh. oh. <laughs> they tell me there's no, no problems. I just, uh, there's this guillotine just hanging over my head. I, I don't want Buzz to find out, but then again, he's going to find out. The, the worse than that, if you can believe it, is Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Jeffrey can never know this is his child. Oh. You don't think that Nola would tell him? Do I you? have no idea what Nola will do. I don't even know the woman. All I know is that Buzz and I were just beginning to get everything back on track. And now it's all going to be upside down again. But. Nola will be thrilled. She'll be there on the sidelines with her treacly sympathy and her rotten cookies. <sighs> well, I knew this moment would come. It's here, so uh, I could tell Buzz. No, you don't. Don't do that. Don't even think about that. Hold on. Hold, yeah. hold it. Is there something wrong with the baby? Come on, you got to tell me. No, there isn't. I didn't mean that. It's, uh, what I meant was, it's just that, you know, men sometimes get... You know, it's women. It's about women, and men are forgotten, and the bike would make up for that, sort of. <clears throat> sort of. That's so crazy, that makes sense to me. You are so <laughs> off the wall, like I was mm, supposed to have been, like I am gonna be. You know, I think I'm gonna get my memory back. Yeah, I told you, you will. You will. I mean, I get these flashes, you know, just in the weirdest times, like I'm zapped right Ooh. out of the blue. And it's, it's, well, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting it waking up with a new piece of the puzzle every day. Well, you know, when you get that puzzle all put together, don't forget your friends. Like who? Like you? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Who can forget you? <sighs> oh, I'm going to buy this thing. Oh, okay. Thanks for the push. Hmm, anytime. So here's Buzz. He's coming over here and he's smiling. I think I sold it. <clears throat> Looks like you got a deal, Jesse Blue. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, keep in mind, it's one fine piece of machinery. Okay, let go. I gotta get my checkbook. <laughs> hey, why don't you take it out for a spin first? Don't mind if I do. What do you say? Want to look dangerously slim? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Cemetery the other day. I hope it's your mother's wedding ring. Where'd you get that? And who the hell gave you the right to give it to her? 
So here you go, as promised. Preliminary witness list. Something wrong? No. We're in your hands, Ross. I thought that you wanted to check out who I may be calling. Ross, you have been my father's best friend for many years. You've always come through for this family big time without anybody looking over your shoulder. And I'm not about to change that formula now. You sure? Ross, I haven't given you nearly the trust you deserve. I am. Um, I've been lashing out at all the people, everybody, you know, that uh, I thought was responsible for Abby being hurt. Even my dearest friends who didn't deserve it. That includes you, and I just hope you can accept my apology. Not needed. I was looking for a scapegoat, you know, and the simple truth is, is that Abby was the wrong place at the wrong time. But now it's time to move forward, Ross. I want to be part of your team. Sounds awfully good to me. Me too. Yes, and I want you to make all the decisions. I mean, after all, I trust you with my son. There's no reason at all I shouldn't trust you with a woman I love. And I won't let you down, either. Now that Ben is out of the picture, we can devote all our energies to Abby's defense. No, Ben. There won't be any comebacks. You're all washed up in this town. I'm only sorry you won't be able to stick around and see Ross win. <laughs> Show you who's the better lawyer. <laughs> you are something, you know that? In fact, you're one of the main reasons I'm gonna stay in Springfield. What are you talking about? Why not? It's a pretty town. People are civil. The women are beautiful, unpredictable. It's even a couple of nice restaurants. In fact, isn't there a for sale sign on the house across the street from you? It already has its fill of termites. Hmm. No, Ben, really, there's nothing for you here. Nothing that would interest a big hotshot like you. Oh, you'd be surprised at what interests me, my friend. My nephews, for instance. Maybe I should stick around and watch them grow up. Toss a football with them on crisp autumn afternoons. We could be like the Kennedys, hanging out on Sundays. Everyone sitting down to dinner, the table creaking with home cooking. The adults discussing the week's events. The kiddies laughing gaily as they play. I can see it all now. The Marler clan. What about the solo Warren clan? Sitting in his New York City apartment, eating out his TV dinners. Hardly. But you know, you look like a gambling woman to me. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a bet. If Ross wins, I'll leave Springfield forever. But if he doesn't win and I have something to do with it, then you sleep with me. What? Why not? I don't drop good ideas easily. What do you say? First of all, how are you going to be responsible for Ross losing, really? I mean, Abby chose him to represent her. She did not choose you. And then there's nobody in the DA's office who can touch Ross as a lawyer, so the case is in the bag. And I took you for a gambling woman. You gambled with the secret of your uh, son's paternity, but you lost that one, didn't you? I lost you? nothing. I have my twins. So you're not at all sure your husband can pull this off, are you? Oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. So take the bet and prove it's ridiculous. Ross is gonna win this thing in a walk. You have no doubts. You can tell me. Oh, well, I keep telling you. Well, then take the bet. I mean, you act like you're talking big and all, but you're not backing it up with anything. Oh, it's gonna feel so sweet to beat you. Okay. The bet's on. So we have a deal. Deal. Ridiculous. Don't think I won't collect when I win. When this case is over, not only will I have you, but you're gonna like it. You know what I love? I just love a man who's all talk and no action. Is that why you married Ross? That's why, Jenna, you cannot tell him about this until he gets his memory back. You Don't haven't convinced that. me that this is the right way no. to go with no. this. Listen to me. Listen to me. When he gets his... When he starts to get his memory back, everything will come back to him about Jeffrey. 
He'll remember how dangerous he is. He will remember how terrified of him you were. And he'll understand this position that you were placed in because he will remember how much you love him. And he will know why you had to do what you did. But if you tell him now, before he gets his memory back, he won't have any frame of reference. He won't be able to understand it. And you will be playing right into Nola's hands. So I'm supposed to back off and just be supportive and, and love him from a distance? Yes. While Nola circles? <sighs> the problem is that I have been walking on eggshells and I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, think, I don't think I can do this for much longer. I think for him, you'll do it as long as it takes. I have to go. I'm sorry, but I have got to go meet Philip. You gonna be okay alone? Oh, of course I will be. Not alone, I got Coop. <laughs> and you know what? Don't worry about Nola. If Noah does anything, just tell me I will take care of Nola. your mother by giving her ring to a bower. Back off, Dad. Yeah, maybe I could give it back. No way, Michelle. Look, what do you care anyways? You were gonna throw it out just like you threw away your life. How dare you? How dare you talk to me like that? And about your mother, Look, too. don't talk about my mother again, okay? I honor her memory. You disgrace it. We wouldn't need any memories if the Bowers hadn't killed her. The Bowers and didn't do anything but try to help her, and you know that, okay? And if she was alive, she would have left you by now anyways, because you're a pathetic drunk. Come on, let's go. Perfect, straight up. Make it a double. You should make up with your father. After what he said? After what he did? No way. His family. Michelle, I don't have any more family. You are my family. And when we have kids, I'm going to show them what a father's supposed to be. Okay, I, I want to forget the past. At least my past. we got to concentrate on the future. Okay? And I'm not going to let my father ruin one more day of my life. Hey, what's going oh, on? Uh, a little strategy going on. Here. We're drawing up a plan for the trial. I've already told Ross this. I just want to tell you, I just how much I appreciate that Ross has dropped his job to represent Abby. It, it's, it's a huge sacrifice, and I really appreciate it. That is in the past, and we're moving forward. In fact, we're moving forward with a new witness, a witness that the jury is going to have to listen to. Another woman that Roy attacked. Oh, where'd she come from? Oddly enough, from Ben. And hopefully, we've heard the last of him. Don't worry. We can handle anything Ben Warren dishes out. Governor! Yeah, hello. It's good to hear your voice again. <laughs> oh, I'm keeping myself busy. Of course, not as busy as I was when I was handling that deal you was down in New Orleans. <laughs> Got ourselves in a passel of trouble, didn't we? <laughs> no, that's all right. I was happy to handle it for you. <laughs> yeah, boys will be boys. But I, I did say that uh, someday I might pull in that mark of yours. And I understand uh, you need a new man in the Springfield DA's office. 